Zoho just acquired a point of sale solution called Zakaya. And in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive and have a look at it for the first time. Okay, so we're all on the website now and we can see a few trademark Zoho things. So straight away, we've got Zoho Sales IQ, which has popped up just behind me here. And we can see that the page layout is very similar to a lot of the other Zoho platforms on the market. When I signed up for this, it picked up my Zoho One account and started a 14 day free trial. On the inside, it looks very much like Zoho Zoho books or Zoho inventory. We can see sales activity, pick, pack, ship to be delivered, etc. It's still only just in beta in Australia. And so you can still see that we've got the Indian rupee symbol. And on the left, you can see there's items, groups, categories, adjustments in the sales area. We've got customers, invoices, credit notes, etc. And on the purchasing side, bills, payments, what have you. If I click on items in inventory, this looks very similar to what you find in Zoho inventory, where you've got item groups, items, composite items, and price lists. I downloaded the Windows client for this and it gave me a user interface like what you would install on a local machine, like a touch screen. I was able to choose whether it was gonna be dark or light layout. And I'm just in the settings area here so we can see whether we wanna do a detail, compact, light or dark theme, whether we want it to be touch screen or a different type of interface. We can select the language, the printer preferences, so like when you're gonna print your receipts and we can select payment terminals where we can, might be able to put in a FPOS terminal as an example. A weighing scale, so if you're selling goods that are weighed out like let's say fruit, vegetables, things like that, you're able to set up a pole display, which means it's a little screen that you can display to the customer to show them the items that you're adding as you add them to the cart. And then you can integrate a cash drawer so that when you're taking payments that it will open the drawer at the appropriate time. In the cart itself, I've got a search bar at the top so I can look for items. I can associate it to a customer by selecting the customer lookup. I can associate a salesperson. And then further in the sales process, I can add cash, card, or other payment methods to quickly process a sale. I can even do split payments, which you can see here in the grayed out section below. If I click on the plus, I can either create an order right then and there, or an invoice. Back in the web version now, we can see that we've got items. So like, why don't we create a new item? We'll call this one coffee. So once we add, say for example, 250 gram bag, of Relevate Coffee. Selling price will be $20, cost price is 13. Down the bottom here, we can say opening stock, reorder points. You might say that you've got 10 units in stock and when you get down to two units that you wanna reorder another batch or box of coffee. So you might make the reorder point as two. Now that we've saved the item, we can see it here. We can then track any of the transactions that occur, any of the history of the item. So if things are updated. And at the moment, this is listed as a returnable item. So I'm not sure where the setting is, but you would be able to remove that if it's a single use. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust stock and I'm gonna say that there is two units on hand and the reason was a stock take result and we're going to convert to adjusted. So that's now saying that we've got two units in stock, which technically is also our reorder point. We can add categories. So if you wanted to add all your food items in one and all your non-food items in another, you've got subcategory, subtypes, etc. Any stock adjustments, which was the quantity adjustment that we just made. We've got a sales customers so we've got walk-in customer so sometimes with a like say for example at a coffee shop yeah you might take a name for the order but you don't necessarily need their name address phone number email you just want to process it so a walk-in customer is just one that you can select straight away in the orders section this is where I downloaded the Windows client so that I could have it on my PC you can also get the mobile version on Apple or Android so a sales order process we can see that there's either a walk-in customer or a phone order and then you've also got the mobile ordering or web ordering on Online. So you can integrate it with the e-commerce site in Zoho Commerce and then on the phone if you happen to have sales reps on the move. Then once the order comes in, then it's either fulfilled straight away if it's a walk-in customer, they've already grabbed it off the shelf or if it's marked for delivery, then there might be home delivery store pickup and then either creating a package and shipping it or just recording it as shipped. So if I create a sales order, it's gonna ask me for the customer so I could grab walk-in customer. I can then select shipping date, 
when the payment is due on receipt. So it's if they've walked in the store, then it's due immediately. And then you then select the item. So here's our bag of coffee and they're ordering one and we can see the price here. And of course there'd be other settings to put in like taxes and things like that. This is very almost identical or is identical to Zoho books and Zoho inventory. So if we go to all invoices, so I just voided the last one, but we can see draft, sent, unpaid, partially paid, overdue, etc. Going into payments received, so you've either got different payment methods like your electronic bank or your manual offline if they happen to pay cash in person. So packages, again, this integrates with Zoho inventory because you've got the status of packages, whether they're picked, packed or shipped. Shipments is generally where you've sent that off to a third party shipping provider like Australia Post as an example. Returns process, so let's just say there was a defective product that brought it back into store. Then you can run the sales order, do the shipment, the product is returned. We then process a return, retrieve the actual package and then provide a refund or a credit note. The credit notes, uh, product returned or order canceled and then there's your refund application of credits. So either you can supply them the cash that they paid or you can apply the credit to future payments. Conflict invoices looks to be where you've got a product that has been ordered by two customers at the same time. So this at least puts it into a bucket where you can start to deconflict any issues. So purchases seems to be very similar to purchase orders. So we've got vendors, they're your suppliers, you've got your purchase orders, you have receiving. So when you've got a purchase order, that's the items that you've bought. And when you've received them, you want to make sure that what you bought is actually what you're getting. So if I happen to buy 30 bags of coffee and I only get 28, then I know that I can track and manage and deal with the situation effectively because I've got my receiving process. So creating a bill, if we owe money for something that's happened and we don't have to pay it immediately. So say for example, we do a last minute purchase order to the supplier or we just grab something from the delivery guy while they're there and then we put in a bill to say, yep, we'll pay for it later in our usual billing run. Payments, again, outbound payments. So you need to attach, attach payment to the bill and then that just makes financial tracking a lot better. And then vendor credits. So if someone has, let's say you've returned an item and they've given you a credit note that you can then make sure that you're using that credit note and that credit note is actually applied next time that you make an order. We have this quick create button where we can select the items, groups, invoices, etc., which seems to be really an extension of the menu up here. And then into the settings menu. So I'm in the business profile and this is a brand new software. It's not really rolled out across the rest of the world yet, but we can see here's the business name, the business type, the business location. I'm not able to change that. It's actually showing as India. Even though we're in Australia um, and my Zoho One is associated with Australia, I'm not actually able to change that because technically it's not available in the other countries just yet. However, it does allow me to sign up for a trial and does pick up my Zoho One user ID. So you, with users, you can invite your staff that are going to use the point of sale system. Branches, we can see that we've got multiple warehouse. So if we've got locations across Australia, and then we might also have multiple warehouses that also draw upon stock that is being used for each of those branches. Our payment settings, so cash, card, manual entry, credit sale. Then you might be able to select your payment providers. So we use Stripe, so we can set that one up. So preferences is quite detailed. So this is where we get to go through and decide whether or not we're discounting, whether we use a PDF attachment for the invoice or sales order. If we give discounting, what we're doing in terms of rounding, if things are billable, we can then edit transaction IDs. We can get more detailed about how items are tracked. Now price lists are a great way to make sure that you can charge different rates either to different customer groups or per region. If it's more expensive for you to deliver your product or service to a particular area, then price lists enable you to use a different price for that particular place in the world. So then you've got settings for sales orders, packages, shipments, invoices. You can decide how to use credit notes, whether you're going to override cost price or use the credit note QR code. Also adding terms and conditions down here. You can also put the settings into the purchase order process. You have the ability to set up your sales channels. So that's your apps, your registers and settings to do with your cart. And this also integrates with Zoho Commerce. So if I select this, it takes me to Zoho Commerce to then set up the web website. There's quite a significant number of reports, which is quite useful across sales, inventory, receivables, payments, payables, purchases, 
uh, etc. If you're finding this useful, I would love a subscribe, a like, and leave us a comment and let us know what you think. Now, while Zoho is continuously rolling out new features and functions, this one is not yet available in Australia. This is showing a lot of promise, but I would be very eager to see a little bit more development in terms of advanced warehouse management and advanced inventory management. It also lacks a few key shipping requirements for Australia and a number of integrations off to other platforms. Having said that, Zoho has been doing a lot of work in this space and there is a huge amount of new features rolled out on a daily, weekly and monthly basis. Thank you very much for watching. You should definitely check out this video.